the John Lennon looking guy from the from the uh, outside was there and that was Bill Hurd and uh, he proceeded to ask me some technical questions about uh, um, uh, about uh, saturation limiting diodes on the input of op amps and uh, also about Laplace transforms which he didn't know how to do and uh, I was like yeah you know so I, I, I think we had a really good interview and sure enough uh, a day or so later they called me in to visit Commodore on Monday and offered me a job on the spot. Yeah, I, I, it's hard to say. I think a lot of people just like the idea of, you know, it's bigger, better, faster, more, but it also runs my old programs. So I don't have to keep a Commodore 64 around. You know, which is, you know, that's a significant thing. You know, I know we sold, I don't know, six or seven million of them at least. And that was, yeah, more more than most people, you know, most companies were selling uh, as far as a single model of a computer. It didn't, it, you know, it didn't match the, you know, the twenty-something million of the of the C64, but nobody else did either. <laughs> so we had, I mean, because we had a big C128 showing. I think we, Bill probably knows the exact number, but I think we had about twenty-five machines being shown off, because every, you know, the 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 idea was this machine was about ready to go out the door. It wasn't quite, but that's that's you know, when you're when you're showing something off at CES. You normally do that because you're, you know, you're trying to sell. That's the show where the people, who, you know, the big, the big box distributors, to use a modern word, um, are buying in order to uh, plan for the following Christmas. So it was, it was a very important show for for them to see the 128 there. So I was running around the floor of the CES show. Now here's the thing: um, the C128, of course, has a reset button on it, but Nobody had really seen a C128 much outside of Commodore engineering. So all these salespeople, and not only that, we'd salespeople from other, you know, for, for, who weren't necessarily in Westchester all the time. And um, we we had booth babes. We had every, you know, we had different people showing off stuff, and they were constantly flipping the reset or flipping the power switch. And as soon as you flip the power switch, the idea of the phase lock loop is that it. it locks the synchronous, it, it, you have to tune it into this frequency and it locks and stays locked until you cut power. When you turn the power back on, the point at which it locks has moved because of the temperature increase. The you know, chips heat up when they run. So every these people would flip off the computer, turn it back on, it wouldn't come up. So I had to run around with a little plastic tweaking tool and a can of freeze spray, getting all the, every time somebody turned a 128 off to get it to come back on. Um, and also to let them know that if it wasn't one of the 80-column chip displays, they should stop putting it in 80-column mode and that sort of thing. And, and it was actually kind of funny because I was just this junior guy who had been there less than a year and I was telling all these salesmen not to do this, not to do that because I was in a mad panic and trying to keep ahead of somebody figuring out that we had this big problem. <laughs> And I think Bill was in the back, probably fixing things that you know that ha had you know anything that had actually failed. You know, today everyone uses a computer, but back then it wasn't the case. You know, it was still kind of a, you know, you you had to be kind of you know you had to be a little ahead of the curve to be using a computer. <laughs>